Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is 7.30 p.m. I'm Mayor Bianca Motley-Broom, and I want to welcome you to our first in-person regular session meeting of the Mayor and City Council of the City of College Park in 2021. I know. I feel, we, we all made it through. We're getting through it. So I, I think that is um, a, a cause for applause. Uh, we have all four council members present, uh, Councilman Clay, Councilman Taylor, Councilman Allen, and Councilman Gay. So I'm calling the meeting to order at this time. Our first action is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, the next item on the agenda is an invocation, and Pastor Dent will be delivering it this evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Uh, it's so good to see everybody together. It's been a long time. So we just want to thank God for that. So let us pray. Heaven Father and our God. The world as we know it is gone, and for what feels like such a long time, we have experienced so much hardship during this pandemic. We are so thankful to you for sparing our lives so that we may meet again for this city council meeting and future activities that are planned for this community. May your grace and love and kindness be with our mayor and council members who assist her in the decision-making process regarding the items listed on the agenda. As we prepare to walk in the future, we pray for the new normal to come. May our hearts be united in you more than ever. May the tender moments of seeing someone again in person be all the richer and more treasured. May the reunions, interactions, and moments ahead be held in such intentionality, and may we turn to you in sincere gratitude. Bless our community, the staff, and the essential workers who serve us with diligence and compassion. Protect our firefighters and police officers with your perpetual presence. Heal our police officers who have been injured. Help us to come out of this pandemic better and not bitter. Help us to become more considerate of others, more mindful of, to help one another, how we can serve. We are your children, and we thank you that no matter how dark the times may get, there's hope of the dawn to come. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Next item is additions, deletions, amendments, or changes to the agenda. Uh, Madam City Manager, I believe we have a couple. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, we do. Um, we have item 8A, which is going to be removed. That's 8A removed? A yes. is an Adam? Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then we're going to add uh, item 8F, which would be the CCTV uh, net planner contract. All right. Any others? No, ma'am. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Those additions and deletions have been noted. Item 3A is approval of the regular session minutes dated June 21st, 2021. I move to approve with uh, a correction. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Go uh, ahead, Councilman Clay. Uh, my correction is on packet page nine. Uh, we had gotten the others in, but this was one that didn't get in, and it is on line 163. It says, now the park in your packet, it has been corrected by Shavela to say Mountain Park. Is that correct, Shavela? Yes. That's all I had. All right, any other amendments to those minutes from June 21st? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous as well. Item 3B is approval of the workshop session minutes from June 21st. I move to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Item 4A. Uh, well, we have a number of proclamations uh, to present this this evening. Um, the first is going to be a presentation of a proclamation to the College Park Police Department for its outstanding service and prompt professional response on April 29th to a major threat to our city and its residents without incident. 
Uh, item 4B is a presentation of a proclamation designating August 3rd, 2021 as National Night Out. Item C, 4C, is a presentation of the spirit of GMIS award to our Chief Information Officer, Mr. Michael Hicks, by the University of Georgia Carl Vinson Institute of Government in recognition of his outstanding work as a member of the Georgia chapter of GMIS. 4D is a presentation of a proclamation to the College Park Tumbleweed Gymnastics Team for their accomplishments in local, state, and regional competitions for the 2020-2021 season. And then 4E is going to be an introduction of new employees uh, by Dr. Dwight Baker. So what we're going to do is we will come down and present these proclamations. For those of you who are involved in the proclamations and will be participating in the photographs, you have the option of keeping your masks on or taking them off for the sole purpose of the picture. Uh, all of us uh, have received both of our vaccines, and we'd love to smile with you. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable, that is absolutely fine. It is your choice. So um, while we're down here, um, while we're talking, I'll keep my mask on. But for the pictures, um, I'll, I'll take mine off. So it is up to all individ individuals. But let's start with the College Park Police. Alrighty, while everyone is getting assembled, I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation. Whereas the City of College Park recognizes the College Park Police Department for its outstanding service and prompt professional response April 29th, 2021 to a major threat to our city and its residents without incident. And whereas as a result of the cooperative efforts of law enforcement jurisdictions, the fugitive was apprehended by College Park Police Officer Andre Townsend. The entire team of officers and 911 operators were relentless in their determination to capture the criminal and return him to custody without causing harm to anyone involved. And whereas we acknowledge the entire police command staff for their crucial updates from the scene, the entire department and the officers that stayed on site even after other jurisdictions left. And whereas once it was confirmed that the fugitive was in custody, the deputy commander of the U.S. Marshal Services received a call from the family members of the victims in Arizona thanking College Park Police for apprehending the criminal. And whereas the city of College Park is a safer place because of the actions of our local law enforcement officers who never gave up and persisted in pursuit and followed the letter of the law to capture. They are our heroes to whom the city is deeply grateful for their service. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and city council of the city of College Park acknowledge the College Park Police Department and hereby recognize the following police officers and staff involved in peacefully apprehending the criminal that, throws a, that posed a threat to our community. The entire police command staff, the day shift, Lieutenant Tiffany Thomas, Sergeant Nico Goss, Sergeant Koishan Fields, Officers Andre Townsend, Jamika Harris, Camille Johnson, Joshua Ando, Willie Connor, Michael McPherson, Ivory Morris, Rodney Morgan, Takesha Frazier, Lachelle Davis, and Gloria Martin proclaim this 19th day of July 2021. And I got to tell you, if this does not deserve a standing ovation, I don't know what does.
<laughs> All right, we've got a resolution and mark your calendars for August 3rd. National Night Out is always a great event and I promised uh, Officer Paniagua that I would not be on the grill so everybody's burgers and hot dogs will be cooked to a certain temperature not over it and burned to a crisp. So, whereas the 38th annual National Night Out, a unique crime drug prevention event sponsored by the National Association of Town Watch has been scheduled for Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. And whereas the NNO provides a unique opportunity for the city of College Park to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts, and whereas all residents and businesses play a vital role in assisting the College Park Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in the city of College Park and is supportive of National Night Out 2021 locally, and whereas it is essential that all citizens of the city of College Park be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and impact that their participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence in the city of College Park, and whereas police community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness and cooperation are important themes of the National Night Out program. And now, therefore, we, the mayor and city council, do hereby call upon all citizens of the city of College Park to join with the College Park Police Department and the National Association of Town Watch in supporting the 38th annual National Night Out on August 3rd, 2021. Further, let it be resolved that we, the mayor and city council, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, as National Night Out in the city of College Park. I'm Mike Howerhan with the University of Georgia, specifically the Carl Vinson Institute of Government. And one of my privileges is to be the academic advisor to an organization here in Georgia made up of public service professionals, IT and IS professionals. And I'm honored to be here tonight and even more honored for the reason why I'm here tonight. And that is to recognize your own Michael Hicks, who is on the board of the Georgia GEMIS, in fact, first, first vice president and is currently serving as acting president, but as our president is under the weather a little bit. I'm not here by myself. There's a couple other board members, and so I don't want to take away from their show, but uh, on an annual basis, UGA uh, is, uh, selects an individual for the Spirit of Genius Award, along with some other awards, and this year, Michael Hicks earned that award for his exemplary service to the board to service beyond the call of duty in terms of what it is he's done and some fellow board members are going to talk a little bit more about that so i truly believe this is an award from georgia Gemus to georgia Gemus. i'll hush up and turn it over to my colleagues first of all mr larry hobbs who's the executive director and media past president of georgia Gemus, and jonathan reich who's second vice president of the board for georgia Gemus. and again they're here to recognize your own michael hicks who is on the board and is first vice president of Georgia Gemus. Gents, it's up to you. Thank you everybody for your time and, uh, and welcoming us to give this proclamation and this award. Uh, we couldn't honestly pick a better person. Uh, so Georgia Gemus is an organization statewide that uh, takes all of the IT professionals, IS, technology groups uh, from municipalities, from county government, even state government, and really uh, takes that opportunity for everybody to bring in their wealth of knowledge, share the technology that we're doing in other organizational units uh, throughout the state. And uh, we're led by a great group of people. Um, and this award really goes to Mr. Hicks because he has not only stepped up in so many ways in our organization, but Mayor, he is uh, establishing um, professional standards. He is doing things that we can only wish we could do sooner. Uh, but because Michael Hicks has done this, we really thought the Spirit of Gemus Award 
is due him for so many reasons. Only a couple we can really spend here today. I know you're a busy group. Uh, but Council, Mayor, we, we appreciate the time, and I'd like to present this to Mr. Hicks uh, on behalf of the Georgia GEMAS Board as a whole and the organization. <laughs> Salutations are certainly in order. Uh, Mayor Council, thank you for having enough faith in me to allow me to go to these conferences to represent College Park. We are on the map now. The state, the governor, uh, the attorney general's office, they know about College Park now. Mercedes Miller, thank you for allowing the department heads to have professional development, because that comes from the city manager's office having a vision to allow the directors to go out and take these classes. And last but certainly not least, the group in the back, could you guys just stand the IT team very quickly. Just want everybody to know. Okay. And one of the reasons one of the reasons I'm able to go to these classes is because I've got a great team that keeps the network working while I'm away. So I'll introduce them very quickly. We talked about the police, National Night Out, and all the things the police does. Mike, Widow, will you raise your hand, please? This guy makes sure all the technology is working inside of the police cars. Everything has to work, and this guy's the one that makes it happen. Next to him is Paul Bennett. Paul Bennett is our assistant network manager. He and Mike Sublett in the back. Raise your hand, Mike. Those two guys are responsible. Every time you turn on your computer, they're the guys that behind the scene make sure it's working. To, to, next to Paul is the senior member of our team, Robert Givens. Everybody knows Robert, but guess what? Those telephones that you've got, a lot of the things that he does behind the scenes with the billing, it wouldn't happen without Robert. Behind those are really the anchors. Conica, will you raise your hand, please? Conica does all of the data mining for our new world and our utility software. So we're happy to have Conica. Last but not least is the anchor of our team, Ms. West. None of us could get anything done without Ms. West, so I want to take time, Mayor Council, to just acknowledge these folks. Because while I'm away, they get to done. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hayden. Picture time. Now for the tumbleweeds. I must say I was expecting tumbleweeds. Remember last time they were like lined up against the wall. Okay, fair enough. That's all right. But come on up. All right. I know, and, 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 and they make a, a site when they're all dressed in, in their uniforms. All right. Don't sit there. Come on. No, it's okay. All right. So we have a proclamation for the College Park Tumbleweed team. Whereas the College Park Tumbleweeds had an impressive season despite challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 to 2021. 
Whereas the competitive gymnastics season was from August 10th through May 14th, 2021, gymnasts competed in the USA Gymnastics Junior Olympic and the Amateur Athletic Union. Whereas the Excel Bronze Tumbleweed team competed and placed first at all USA Gymnastics sanctioned competitions this season. Whereas all 36 participants on the Tumbleweed Gymnastics team scored a 9.0 or higher on the floor exercise. That's, that's impressive. Whereas Excel Gold gymnasts Reagan Wright and Al Alana, is it Alana? Alana Hatcher represented the City of College Park Tumbleweeds programs as state champions on April 10th, 2021 at the Infinite Energy Center, Center in Duluth, Georgia. Whereas Excel Silver gymnasts Jasmine Lay and Excel Gold gymnasts Sadie Westland were regional qualifiers. Whereas Excel Gold gymnasts Sadie Westland placed first at regionals on May 1st, 2021 at Lake Point Sporting Complex in Emerson, Georgia. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Mayor and City Council of the City of College Park that the College Park Tumbleweeds Gymnastics Team is recognized for their hard work, dedication, and their accomplishments during the competitive 2020-2021 season at the local, state, and regional level of competition. Proclaim this 19th day of July, 2021. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am here to present the new employees for the period of June 20th, 20, June 2021 and July 2021. Employees, if you're here, will you please come forward and take your picture with Mayor and Council. Deborah Calloway, cashier. Kiana Cook, code enforcement officer. Kendall Evans, police officer. Demetrius Harvey, laborer one. Sean Hightower, litter collector. Kimberly Lowe, accounting assistant. Brittany Pooler, jailer. Fritz Remy, police officer. Nathan Ridiger, executive intern. Bruce Braxton, part-time police officer. Jasmine Buncombe, part-time court clerk. Tashika Cousins, police officer. Tatiana Fleming, police officer. Tiffany Hahn, event service manager. Janice Spady, part-time receptionist. Melissa Echevera, Director of Public Works. And Jonathan Allen, Police Officer. <laughs> and Joanne Young, Human Resources Generalist. <laughs> All right, the next item on our agenda is remarks to citizens. Ms. Moore? Yes, ma'am. I have two uh, email remarks. And the first one reads, let me start my timer. The first one is from Kathleen, Catherine McLeod, and it reads, my name is Catherine McLeod. I am the community support and coordinator for the center, a new business that has opened up in College Park on Old National Highway. 
I would like to introduce us to the mayor and city council members by letting you know that who we are and what we are about. The center will provide vital community supportive type services as a faith-based organization, i.e. access to educational training, food, job resources, housing, and identify mental health services available locally to persons in need. Ms. Moore, can you get a little bit closer to the mic because I'm having a little trouble hearing you, so <clears throat> you want me to start over? No, I, uh, I just want to make sure that everyone can Okay. Thank you. It will also network with organizations throughout College Park and the county to provide opportunities for professionals and volunteers with specialized skills to empower, educate, and train. Location is 4818 Old National Highway, College Park, Georgia. Okay. Okay, the next comment is from Kirby, Kirby Lou, and it reads, this email is specifically to the Ward 4 Council Member Gay. This council person conducts himself without integrity, morals, or decency in his camp campaign. His campaign tactics are consistently targeting members of the community for character assassination. He owes Ward 4 an apology as over the past week, Members of the community that he claims to represent have fallen victim to false information spread by either himself or his campaign through robocalls or spam emails. If he had an actual platform, then he wouldn't be spending time on resources toward robocalls or spam emails propagating false allegations. I would like for Councilman Gay to formally and openly state that he will henceforth run a clean and decent campaign and let his talents or lack thereof speak for themselves, a concerned citizen. And those are all the comments that I perceive. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, at this time, if there is anyone in the audience who was not either one of those folks who's already had the opportunity to speak for three minutes, if you wish to speak for one minute at this time, you may uh, approach and get that time. Seeing no one, we will go ahead and move forward. Item 6A is a discussion and update on the top 10 delinquent property taxpayers. And item 6B is a discussion and update on the top 10 delinquent utility customer accounts. Both of those are being handled by Ms. Floyd Bradley. Any questions for Ms. Floyd Bradley on either one of those issues? No questions here. I had a, a couple questions and I apologize, uh, Althea. I didn't see the, uh, an email response to them. I'm, I expect you said it, you always do. Uh, this is on packet page uh, 52. And the first item, uh, BNK Hotel Group, what, what is the status of that? Uh, was that payment actually received? Um, let me look up the email because I did send, because there were a couple of questions. Hold on one second. I didn't see it, but I get a flood of responses on Monday usually, and I'm could have missed it so I yes I sent it to both emails but I have it right here on the Howard Johnson um, they did make a $20,000 credit card payment and they promised to pay that they um, promised to initially pay on July 9th so we did receive that um, they are aware that they need to pay $30,000 this month and another 30,000 in August to avoid the September 7th tax sale good good excellent uh, and the next item uh, for Express Jet, what was the rationale for reclassifying that property? Um, tax compliance firm Ryan LLC convinced county assessor that their lease was on taxable, was non-taxable since there was no provisions for the lease to have any ownership rights. The statute we used to initially get um, them to, to initially get them on the tax roll has a provision that um, any leasehold Im improvements are taxable. Express Jet assume lease from their merger with Southwest. Um, he's working with Fincher in Denmark, and we have supplied to the county assessor what we believe the value of the lease improvements are. And this was just last week, so we should get some information soon. But the, the, the basic property tax, is that is that part of the use of front issue with the airport? Okay, that's, that's what I suspected. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry. You're welcome. I, no I problem. That. Any other questions for Ms. Floyd Bradley on item 6A or 6B? No, good. All right, any issues or questions 
for Ms. Floyd Bradley in regard to item 6C, which is the utility assistance grant program update. Yes, I, I got a question. What, when is the last day people can sign up? I know it on chain so It's time. open. It's, it's open. open. It's ongoing. They can come in and um, they have to, it's by appointment only. They have to contact the grant administrator and set up an appointment. But we're, we're open, wide open. We're working with any and everybody that comes in and needs assistance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, and I did get your, all your answers to those, and I'm happy to hear you think we're not going to leave any money on the table. We better not. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Floyd Bradley. We have no public hearings. Uh, so we're moving on to item 8A, which is not on the agenda anymore. That's been removed from the agenda. So we're moving on to item 8B, which is consideration of an action on a request for approval of the renewal of city planner services agreement between the city of College Park and the collaborative firm. Any questions regarding this particular issue? I see that Mr. Hightower is here. No. All right. Any mo is there a motion? I motion to approve. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Item C is a consideration of an action on a request for approval of landscaping services for the City of College Park Golf Course and the Recreation and Cultural Arts Recreation Sports Fields. Ms. Johnson, I believe this is uh, your uh, item. Good evening, Good evening. Any questions for Ms. Johnson on this particular issue? I'm good. Hearing none, is there a motion? So moved. All right, thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Gay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Thank you. All right, item 8D is consideration of an action on a request for approval of the annual lease payment to Motoro Motorola Solutions Credit Company for maintenance of police radios and equipment. This is our well, interim I'll chief. move to approve that. Okay. All right, is there a second? A second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that is unanimous. Item E is consideration of an action on a request for approval to pay Central Square Technologies for the annual maintenance and technical services to maintain the updates and service for the One Solution RMS CAD systems in the College Park Police Department. I move to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Item 8F is the consideration of an action on CCTV SLA net planner system. Move to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Item 9A is consideration of an action on an ordinance authorizing the city's Main Street Advisory Board to administer the College Parklet Program and to approve policies and procedures related thereto. I believe there were some changes uh, to that. Uh, okay. Yeah. You, you were specifically addressing the indemnity provision? Yes, I was. Yes, sir. Um, those have not been made um, yet. We reviewed your heads up. Those are in the works. Um, you, the council is free to approve subject uh, to that, or we can bring it back. Well, it would seem to me that since the parklets were actually going to be installed today, I believe. Uh, and then uh, I think inclement weather got Presumably away. they'll be installed when it stops raining. Um, do we need... We probably need that in place, don't we? Uh, let's let's talk with Ms. Coakley since she is here. She might be able to give us a better idea of the timeline. I think you, I think I might have received an email asking for a second round of volunteers when the weather permits. So if you could let us know. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so we are planning to move forward on this Thursday uh, morning. Um, I have the same set of volunteers in hand. This policy would need to be in place. Um, the the businesses are giving uh, a leeway of um, the first 90 days. So essentially, we would just need this approved before that time frame. So it is totally up to the body if you would like us to bring it back. But the changes that you did request, Councilman Clay, we were making them. Um, Ms. Danielle was going to take care of okay, those. Okay, I normally don't do this, but I think we need to get that agreement in place. So I'm going to yes. move to approve subject to the agreement being adjusted uh, to take care of the indemnity with regard to premises. Uh, I think that was, a, that was a major issue you guys wanted to look at. There was a little lack of clarity as to whether the premises are the parklets or the, the DLT right away or the whatever, and that needed to be clarified. So the, uh, 
So I'll move to approve it subject to that change being put in. And I think you made another minor change with regard to uh, 11 o'clock. Correct. There was one grammatical um, change that was made as well as the time for the alcohol portion for the businesses to be able to sell alcohol. So. Yeah, it, it, you, you were going to serve them a drink and they'd have to drink it in a millisecond because the waitress was going to take it away. <laughs> so call it, huh? that wouldn't have been, we stand been by too our good rules. for anyone. I mean, <laughs> I suppose you could chug a lug, but. We don't want to encourage that. We don't want to encourage that. So I, and I, I think that was pretty much uh, the substantive Correct. changes. So I want to make sure that everyone's clear on the indemnification issue um, be before we're voting on that to make sure that we all understand it. Gentlemen, are you clear on okay. Councilman Clay's concerns about that and what Fincher Demark is going to do in regard to that? Or do you want Mr. Demark to go into a little bit more detail on that? I, I can go through I could go through the changes if that's helpful. I mean Mr. Demark, can you put it in a in a nice box for us? Yeah, I, there's a concern that the parklets are in the DOT right of way, but the there's a the interplay between the DOT right of way um, and the the restaurant owners um, having ownership or at least control over the patrons in the parklets. And so, if a citizen uh, or patron is injured, whose responsibility? And so, the city need the city of College Park needs to be indemnified such that it's clear that it's not the city's liability, uh, but rather it'll be the liability of either. The, uh, the, the the restaurant owner, or maybe even DOT, but they're going to indemnify the city of College Park so that we're not on the hook. I, I would assume, right. though, that it, if I were DOT, I would not want College Park to place that responsibility on us since, since the people are standing on the parklets, sitting on the parklets, getting on and off the parklets, but they're not actually walking in DOT street. I, I thought DOT already. Yeah, it, it, it's DOT anyway, first and foremost, and secondarily, it's we can shift liability by agreement, and so the restaurateurs will be agreeing to indemnify the city of College Park. So if you're going to get a permit, part of that process is you're going to agree to indemnify the city, and so whatever ordinary rules that would have prevailed, those are going to be amended or affected by the indemnity. Agreement. Okay, so it, it you don't have to single out DOT or anyone. All you have to say is, is it is not us. And that was my concern because it talked about premises and premises. What are the premises? You know, yeah, well, we, we'll define that and yeah. what the indemnity is. Okay. All right, so everyone clear? Clear. All right, Councilman Clay has made a motion. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. All right, item 10A, consideration of an action on a resolution to authorize the College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority to refinance all the obligations related to the previously issued Civic Center Project Revenue Bond Series 2013 and the Civic Center Project Revenue Bond Series 2016. Um, good afternoon, I mean good evening. I have um, Ed Wall, our financial advisor, and um, Doug Selby here if you have any questions regarding the refinance. Any questions for Ms. Floyd Bradley, Mr. Wall, or Mr. Selby? No questions. I have one question. All right. I, it's probably in my packet. I'm being lazy. What is the total amount of refinance of these bonds? The total amount? 41,000. 41, 000, 41 million 870. No. no. For all of There's two of them. There's one. No. So, um, Councilman Gay, how you doing? Um, there's five bond issues. Uh, a, B, C, D, and E. The A series is thirty-three million nine ninety. The B series is three million three hundred thirty-five thousand. The C series is one million nine hundred twenty thousand. The D series is four million one hundred seventy, and the E series is three million two hundred forty-five thousand. You don't have the E before you yet. We'll have to bring the E back to you. We didn't have enough documents done yet to bring it to you. And and approximately how much of that is by the debt? In total, yes, um, approximately. The city's totals are about 165 million. Um, probably 80 percent of it is through BIDA. Okay. And one final question: 
Have any of these debts ever been satisfied since they was first originated? So you have paid off some debt in the years that I've worked for you, yes, sir. I, I, we're not extending the maturity. These maturities, um, they're 15 years in term, and some of your debt goes out for 30 years. Okay. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Uh, first off, the, we've already approved in concept going forward with this. Yes, sir. BIDA has already approved in concept going forward with this. Yes, sir. The amount of pressure that this takes off of the city's finance over the next three years, if I remember rightly, is about $25 million. Yes, sir. Spread over the three years. Yes, sir. And that enables us to hopefully not have to raise taxes, et cetera, et cetera, in, yes, sir. in doing that. Yes, sir. So what we're really approving tonight is the the wording of the uh, authorization to BIDA, who in turn also will then have a set of documents to approve to actually execute this. Yes, sir. To be specific, you're approving the intergovernmental contract that backs the bonds and pays for them, and you're approving the issuance of the bonds by BIDA. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> so, the one thing that I didn't understand, you said there is one that is not in this package? Yes, sir, Series E bond. And when would that get approved? So um, we're still trying to get all the documents together so that uh, Doug Selby can finish drafting them. And um, I don't have a time period. I hope to bring it to you either in a special call meeting or at your August meeting. Okay. And uh, one of the issues that I had, the only issue that I had since we've already effectively approved it conceptually, is that the city attorney had not reviewed all the documents in the packet. Has, have you done that, Winston? Are you good with it? Okay. I have reviewed them too, they're good to go. Okay, so I will move to approve. Do we have to, should we approve each one separately or do you wanna do this as a group? I think it, we ought to be doing separately. I think uh, so as well. Just to make sure. Yep. So I will approve uh, item A, move to approve item A. Is there a second? I'll second with a comment. I might right. want to also mention that it helps us maintain a credit rating that is a very good credit rating. So if we do have to get into problems later on, we have that credit rating and we can borrow money a lot a lot cheaper. Good point. And we can pay it off early. If you pay it off early, uh, I forgot what that was, Mr. Wall, if we paid it off. After five years, no Okay, just like free money. And, and and the actual cost of the refinancing, because there is a cost, if you don't pay it off early, I presume the cost is less if you do, was about, as I remember, about a million and a half dollars? Yes, sir. Okay. So to take $25 million of pressure off of us, given the serious situation that we've been in due to the COVID, cutting off a lot of our revenue, uh, I think it's a real bargain. And if we can pay it off earlier, I assume that number of one and a half million gets better. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I have one comment, if I may. I think, I, as a matter of fact, I actually publicly recommended that we do bond refinancing due to the issues of COVID. But, but my bigger concern, or not concern, but my bigger issue is that we've carried this debt for a long period of time, way before I was on council on some of them. And my thing is, I was always raised to believe that you pay your debt off. You don't. You, that's how my parents raised us. You pay your debt off. We've had approximately $100 million of revenue for at least a decade. So all I'm saying is I'm glad that there is a, a way to, to take some of the pressure off us because of COVID. But we as a body needs to seriously start thinking about how to satisfy some of this debt. Well, to that, to that point, I, I agree with you that we do certainly need to be in the mode of making sure that we honor our commitments. We also built an arena in that time. And so that increased the debt. I'm sorry, so I didn't hear that. That we built an arena in that time. So the debt has gone up. So even, I mean, that, that changed the game in terms of the numbers. So as we're attempting to address those I issues, we're still borrowing more in, in order to do different projects. But uh, the, the heart of what you're saying, I 
I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, any other comments? Any questions? Well, I guess the only other thing I would say is if we hadn't spent money to buy back the property from the airport that was bought with 80 percent uh, federal money and 20 percent Atlanta money, we wouldn't be in the position we're in right now to have a six west. So these are good investments in the future of the city as long as we're careful what we're doing. And, and who is the bond? Uh, is it all been uh, one organization? Is it? Because I know you said it once that we were shopping it out, and I never know who finally took that. So, so there's all kind of different folks that own the bonds. Some are owned by individuals of the public. Some are owned by PNC Bank. Some are owned by SunTrust Bank. So it's all. Each time you do a bond issue, we bid it out competitively, and it's different folks that get it different times. And none of the maturities have been extended. When we refinance, it would just be to get a lower interest rate. And so um, as you pay, as you get money from Six West, it would be great that you call the bonds early, like y'all talked about, and you can pay them off early. But we've never extended the maturity. Whenever a transaction was done, they were either done with 15-year bonds, 20 years, the original GICC was done with 30-year bonds. Do, do you think we're solvent enough to take on more bond debt? After this financing, yes, sir. We could. You weren't before. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Wall or any comments? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That is unanimous. Item 10B. I move to approve. Let me read it out. Uh, consideration of and action on a resolution to authorize College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority to re refinance all the obligations related to the previously issued Public Safety Revenue Bond Series 2013. And Councilman Clay is moved to approve. Is there a second? <laughs> I'll second. All right. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Item C, consideration of an action on a resolution to authorize the College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority to refinance all the obligations related to the previously issued hotel project revenue bond series 2014. I move to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. Consideration of item D is consideration of an action on a resolution to authorize the College Park Business and Industrial Development Authority to refinance all the obligations related to the previously issued taxable refunding revenue bonds series 2014. I move to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. And item E is consideration of an action on a request for, oh, we're done with that. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I got into the rhythm of it. All right, we're on to holiday events, and that's Ms. Johnson. Consideration of an action on a request for approval of holiday events hosted by the College Park Department of Recreation and Cultural Arts. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Any questions? We're looking at doing our Christmas parade, so hopefully we can do that since we canceled it last year with COVID. Um, also doing the Thanksgiving um, luncheon, our senior luncheon, and we're adding that new event with um, Santa's Ride By. So we'll have some great events. That was so great last year. Yeah. I know. It was. Well, it was a great idea. Oh, my gosh. And there was a, an amazing elf on the fire truck. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So we added that event to our normal schedule. Um, even though we're going to do the Christmas parade, we will have the, um, the drive by with the Santa. I think that was a great idea with the police and fire. It was a great collaborative event um so any questions i see on here that's got uh light up the city tinsel trail so yes yeah, so we're working on a collaboration with uh, main street um on something added to our light up um and maybe um, i can briefly touch on it but we're looking at adding trees and maybe having collaborations with businesses to either sponsor a tree and add that to the light up for the evening so we're working with main street on that any other questions for Ms. Johnson? Is this, does this require a motion? It's just something we normally bring to you just so that you're aware of the, okay. the dates. I mean, if anyone... <laughs> Ms. Miller, does this require a motion? I, I, don't, I don't think we... No, ma'am. Just information. All right, just, just information. information. Any other questions for Ms. Johnson on that? All right. Thank you. Hearing none, appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. City Attorney's Report. Uh, just want to say uh, it's good to be back. Good to see all of you again. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, down at the GMA Convention in Savannah. All right. 
Ms. Miller, City Manager's Report. Nothing at this time. Thank you. All right. We've got the report of Mayor and Council. We'll start with Councilman Clay. Well, I'd just like to welcome everybody back, and uh, it feels really good to be back. Uh, I'd, I'd like to encourage everybody out there who has not gotten their shot. There is a Delta variant. It spreads faster. There's indications that it's a little more severe. And it's a good idea to get your vaccination. It'll make all of us safer. And with that, uh, I'm just glad to be back. And I have nothing else that I want to cover. All right, Councilman Taylor. Yes, I want to say um, coming up on this election season, I feel like that, you know, I've been hearing a lot in the community. I feel like that we need to find a way to respect each other and treat each other throughout this election. It's, I think it's real bad to treat people wrong and intimidate people while you're trying to do this. It's a race. And I feel like we should just get out and let the people realize who they want and, you know, vote for the person you want and don't be intimidated into voting for anybody. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Councilman Allen? Uh, first of all, let me just uh, welcome everybody back. I think it's great to be back here. Uh, I love being here in the council. I love seeing people's faces and their comments. Uh, I want to say thanks to the Public Works, the, the water and sewer people. The other day I was out and it was raining about like it was this afternoon, and there were four people uh, that worked for the city, water and sewer, and they were down in a ditch fixing a water line in the rain, had mud all over them, uh, and I stopped to, to say thank you very, very much, and uh, they appreciated it. So when you see these people out on the street and, and they're in these holes and they're wet and they're dirty, just stop and say thank you. They really do appreciate it. They, these guys were doing a great job, and they just really appreciated me just saying hello to them and, and thanks. Uh, I got word today that there's a former City to College Park uh, worker, Louise Campbell. Probably none of us remember, but today she's celebrating her 99th birthday. So I just wanted to have a shout out to her. 99 years. Uh, she's probably not up listening to this tonight, but hopefully she'll, she'll get the word. But happy birthday, and, and I appreciate that. So, uh, and that's all I have. All right, Councilman Gay. Well, uh, speaking of uh, notice, I would like to uh, acknowledge that we're going to have the uh, citywide ward for community festival October the 9th at the Phillips Park. Uh, I didn't want to say anything, but on the business of uh, elections, uh, as many of you know, I've, I've run for office for 30 years. I lived in College Park for all those 30 years. And um, I was asking myself, why do people have to say anything negative during a campaign? So I thought about the question long and hard, and I thought about the fact that $150 million was spent in election ads during the runoff or warnoff. $150 million. And I kept saying to myself, why would someone spend that much money saying anything but favorable about another candidate. And it dawned on me that beyond it being negative, you now have a government that can get legislation approved that gives more equality and fairness to this, to this country. One side was more or less dominating. You can now talk about expansion of Supreme Court. You can talk about getting a uh, stimulus money. There's just so much can happen when one side never gives. So I guess what I'm saying is if anything comes out of this campaign, and I guess I'm talking to the, to the record, but if anything comes out of this campaign, I'm going to own my words. I'm not going to hide behind uh, fake emails. I'm not going to hide behind my, my citizenry. The words are going to come out my mouth. And the final thing I want to say is that uh, it's silence that's betrayal. That, that what has hurt us more than anything is silence. It's not speaking truth. Truth to power makes change. And if there's corruption, if there's nepotism, if it's fraud, 
I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like um, that I don't see things. That's going to be my role. And as I was telling someone today, reasonably within the law, within ethics, as we say in the streets, we're going to turn up. But we're going to do it fair, but we're not going to play games. We're going to speak the truth, and we're going to let the evidence go where it goes. So I look forward to a great, competitive, healthy re-election. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I would uh, ask that uh, we are, I think, at the top of an election season for uh, a good chunk of our city and that moving forward, we keep the election comments out of it because we're here to do this, the city's business. And whatever the citizens decide is what the citizens decide. So let's stay focused on that. Uh, and one of the things that we need to decide uh, is since the governor has allowed us to take to the citizens uh, the, the decision of the municipal option sales tax, when that will go on the ballot. And uh, in talking with my counterparts in Hapeville and East Point, they are looking at May 24th, 2022 for, for that. And uh, some of that, uh, I, what I'd like to do is have uh, the general counsel from GMA come in and talk with us a little bit about the process behind that and uh, have us uh, make a decision in regard to that. So if the, the body is willing to do that, I will extend an invitation. I know that on August 2nd, we have the, the finalist for the police chief coming in, but perhaps on August 16th, we can get that at a workshop session to answer any questions you might have right. about that right. process, uh, because I don't think either, either city, uh, any of the other cities in the Tri-Cities are inclined to put it on the November ballot, so I think we'd be shooting for that if we were falling in line with the other cities. So is that amenable to the body? I'm, I'm good. Okay, great. Uh, also wanted to thank Sergeant Long and Battalion Chief Jones for putting up with me for multiple hours on ride-alongs that I did with the police department and uh, the fire department. I learned so very, very much and it, it deepened my appreciation for our first line responders and the work that they do day in and day out for the citizens of this city. And I would encourage all of my colleagues, if you have the opportunity to do the same, because it is, it, the, the level of professionalism and uh, teamwork and heart that our first responders have is, is truly exceptional. And the way that in which they, they care for the people that they encounter in our city is, is truly something to behold. So if you get the chance, jump at it. And uh, I hope to go with Public Works next. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> See you back. All right. Okay. All right. So that's all that I have. Uh, we concluded executive session, uh, and we needed. We have a couple of motions out of executive session. Uh, one relating to litigation. An authorization of a settlement memo. Yeah, I will move to approve that. Second. Thank you, Councilman. I heard Councilman Allen. For, or, Allen. <laughs> you guys are spooky. It's him. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give it to Councilman Gay then. All right, so Councilman Gay seconded. All those in favor? Uh, aye. And I think we had, uh, I think, believe that is unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I think we had two cybersecurity issues as well. Cybersecurity issue A, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Councilman Clay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Allen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous. And cybersecurity action B. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> yeah, I saw him first. I saw him first. All right, Councilman Kay on the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous as well. And I believe. Oh, we have to approve the executive session minutes. minutes. Is that your to motion? The Aye. Aye. Session. Oh, okay. Councilman Clay moved. Councilman Allen. He's seconded. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. That is unanimous as well. And at 830, this meeting is adjourned. Have record. a great evening. Thank you, everybody, for coming.